Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new series called Isaac 101. I am here not playing the role of the Isaac player for once, but playing the role of the Isaac coach. And I'm coaching my friend, you probably know him as well, friend of the channel, Michael A.L. Fox, who I think has a startling confession to make with respect to his Binding of Isaac experience. Uh, yes, actually, this is my very first time playing this goddamn game. Uh, it's wonderful, let me just say that already, and <laughs> I, I would like to say, I'm not playing it now because I thought it'd be bad or anything like that, but I like to invest a decent amount of time into games, so I don't want to start one kind of half-assed with a whole bunch of other stuff, you know, necessarily distracting me, so... Yeah, exactly. Like, people seem to have this idea that because we're friends, you should also play the Binding of Isaac religiously. But that's not the case. This is one of your first runs through the game. This is actually, we should point out we're doing post-commentary here because that's the way that it's, you know, technologically feasible for us here. Yep. Uh, but basically the way this series is going to work is we're going to do the same thing for him that basically happened to me. We're going to take him from complete newbie at the Binding of Isaac into, you know, at least someone who's half decent. I wouldn't necessarily call myself great at the game, but, uh, you know, some level of competency will hopefully be accrued by the end of this. Yeah, uh, yeah so this is, uh, I, I guess this is technically my second time playing this game. The first one was uh, familiar, familiarizing myself with the actual controller and stuff. Just getting getting the gamepad all set up. I'm not playing with the, the keyboard, I'm playing with a 360 controller, so I wanted to make sure I knew which button did which uh, and all that stuff, so uh, I, I guess that made me a tiniest bit more competent at just moving around a room and stuff like that, but I, I only lucky made, pill. <laughs> made like, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what the pills actually do uh, well, every pill has a, a, a set effect that is based on its color, but the color and like the effects that match up with the colors are randomized after each game. So like your blue pill that you just had there that gave you uh, like pretty or gave you a bunch of flies around you will always give you that on this run, but on the next run blue pills might be like bad pills, they might cause you to fart or something, or they might cause you to take damage, or they what's, might be good. What's wrong with farting then? <laughs> it's actually a good thing if you can manage to use it effectively against the bosses. Yeah. So you're, uh, you're doing something here that I would probably disagree with, you're putting bombs down to fight the bosses. Uh, it's not necessarily a big deal, but if you if you have a lot of bombs, but if you don't have a lot of bombs, you're going to want to use those for uh, for other things. And that was another good thing that you did right there was using your uh, spacebar item. So the way spacebar items work is that uh, they after you use them, they have a set amount of rooms you need to complete in order to charge them again for almost every spacebar item. So the item you're currently using uh... gives you those blue flies around you, but it only takes one room to charge. So you, whenever possible, you should be using that. Because I was single room. I was wondering what those those blocks, the six blocks, I guess, on the right side of the item where I just thought that was kind of some time, you know, counter or whatever till I could use it again. Or I, I don't know, but yeah, yeah, it works pretty similar to that. And you've got, I would say you have okay items so far. You haven't gotten anything truly game breaking. You're making good use of the self sacrifice rooms, which you know cost you health to walk in into and out of. Yeah, Which, I, I, I mean, yeah, it varies in terms of usefulness, but you know, everyone has a different play style. I don't think that's necessarily a mistake. Um, yeah, I definitely uh, took that into consideration. But looking looking at my health, I, I wasn't too concerned. But then again, I don't have any idea what I'm headed for. Uh, right. <laughs> just so so people know, like, yeah, we're we're good friends and stuff like that. And I watch a lot of your videos and, and vice versa sometimes when I have stuff that's. That's out, but I have hardly watched, you know, more than maybe five minutes total of your Finding <laughs> Isaac videos. Not, I mean, it know. hurts to hear you say that, but it's good to get that out on camera, you know? You know, I, I support them, but I, I didn't, the reason I didn't is because I didn't want to ruin too much of the surprise for me. A big thing with video games is I like going in not knowing hardly anything. Just the sense of discovery is, is one of the, the biggest things for me in games. That's where I get a lot of enjoyment is just like... Figuring things out on my own, which is, I guess, one of the reasons why I, typically I've enjoyed puzzle games in the past and, and riddle-based games, so... Oh, that's, that's poetic, man. Yeah. Now, you're making me a little bit nervous here. Oh, you're the luckiest player I've ever seen. Normally, when you go to that guy, I mean, sometimes he will pay out with a good item very quickly, but uh, usually he's going to take more hearts than that in order to make it happen. So you got very lucky with that. Uh, <laughs> Ignorance is bliss, man. Yeah. <laughs> so you got the Pact, which gives you a uh, damage upgrade, and I think maybe other upgrades I think it's, am I, uh, he spits a little bit faster, or is that me just... No, I, no, it could be. I, I'm honestly not sure of the exact mechanics of, of the Pact. There's other items like that that do similar things, and they all have slightly different effects. At any time you want, you can hit Escape and kind of like check out how your stats are progressing. Oh, like it'll, okay. it'll bring up a, a menu that has like your speed and your attack damage and your tiers. But you're making me very nervous here with your... <laughs> 
<laughs> dodging. I mean, that's the thing with the Binding of Isaac is that it's going to take you a while to kind of get the dodging down. Yeah, you don't have a key, so you can't go in there. Yeah. But um, once you actually get that mechanic down, then it's all about, like, overarching strategy, which, you know, you'll figure out eventually. Basically, I think you've been playing all right so far. You've been making okay decisions, but the... The big thing you have to keep in mind is when you have like very limited amounts of keys and bombs, you want to use those for very specific things. Like if you have very limited amounts of keys, you want to save those and use those on the treasure room and the shop. The treasure room is the thing with the crown. Uh, right. The shop obviously you went into before. Okay. So you got Pageant Boy here and you got two nickels out of it, which is actually fantastic. So my funny. guess is that you will probably uh, want to go to the shop after this. I think that's actually what I did. Uh, that's yeah. a smart decision then in this case because... I, that's something that, like, in my very early runs, I absolutely would not be like have the mental fortitude to do. If you watch like my first couple of episodes, I skip treasure rooms all the time. So I'm hoping that I can't remember if there was a key in there, but if there is a key in there, you should probably buy yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, this... I'm almost. Yeah, I th I'm pretty sure I do because I got 19 coins, man. I think right. I buy everything. Or... So you're buying the coin purse. Uh, actually, the the coin purse is not a bad idea. It gives you all these pills that may or may not have good uses. So we'll see about that. I think I just. I, used I found them all. pills and ate them. Does nothing. Uh, so, puberty. same with puberty. What does puberty do? That was my biggest... Puberty and, like, I found pills are basically the same. I've heard rumors that... Oh, that's good. Uh, I've heard rumors that maybe puberty gives you one damage upgrade. And I found pills just doesn't do anything except change, like, the look of your character. That, well, you got three of them there. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a character in the game uh, that you'll unlock later. We'll, we'll talk about how to unlock characters as well. Right. Uh, but there's a character in the game that you unlock later called Kane, and one of the things about him is that he's lucky... So, and he also has this ability, like, if you get pills, the pills can never be bad. They can only be okay. Bloody like, lust. Average or, or better. So, Kane is really good when you get a lot of pills with him. Okay. You, uh, you can also, as you see, like, shoot this fire, and sometimes you'll get pennies out of it. Sometimes, yeah. if you shoot poop, you can get, like, hearts out of it and stuff like that. Well, that's what I figured. I was, I was thinking, like, they're not, this, this is a pretty basic game. They're not going to add stuff that you can't interact with. So, I saw, I saw that I could destroy that stuff usually. I don't know. Maybe something pops up, but I don't think I... Found anything in oh, videos, his little but... weenus! Yeah, it's, it's it's not cool. Dude gets humiliated all the time. What does the Bloody oh. Lust do? Yeah. Okay, Bloody Lust is a, a new item that just came in with the Wrath of the Lamb expansion. By the way, oh man, he found a secret room by pure luck there. Hey! <laughs> no, I, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> now I know how people feel when they watch my videos. <laughs> Uh, okay, so the way Bloody Lust works, that's a new item that was added in Wrath of the Lamb, and I'm happy to see that you are playing Wrath of the Lamb, I think it's really good DLC. Um, you can see that, like, the more enemies you kill, your tears actually change color from, like, transparent or blue to red. That means, basically, the more enemies you kill, the more damage that you're dealing. So, oh. if you're on a room with a lot of enemies, rage is really good, but it kind of sucks sometimes if you're on a room, like a boss, for example, that only has himself, he doesn't create any enemies, then it can be difficult for you. Oh, okay, I see, I see. But it's good overall. I think if you have decent uh, base damage, then then Rage is a solid item. It shows up all the time, too. Uh, so I probably... Th this is a little bit more advanced, but if you only had one key and not very much money, I would almost always save it for the, the treasure room as opposed to the shop. Yeah, I, I was kind of uh, ignorant of that, that fact until I got in there. I looked at my two coins and... You know, I kicked myself, but... <laughs> no, it's all good. Like, there's there's a lot of stuff to keep in mind when you're playing through this game. Honestly, you're playing way, way better than I was playing on my first run here. It's it's be because of all my years uh, spent uh, in gym class playing dodgeball and shit. Ah, uh, absolutely. This... i kind of thinking that you, you're trying to find the secret room because you see that, like, question mark up there on the map. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly... So the secret room will show itself if it's ever... Like, because that one dude shot a bomb that opened up the secret room, then it appeared on your map. There you go. So, you could have gone in when he blew it up, but this is fine, too. Because you, you figured it out and went back for it. And so, the secret room usually contains money. Sometimes it will contain good items. So, it's usually worthwhile if you have enough bombs to look for the secret room. And the trick about the secret rooms, uh, even if somebody doesn't, like, use a bomb and explode it to show it to you, you can usually find it yourself by trying to look for, like, a space where a room could be, like, adjacent to three rooms at the same time. Oh, okay. Okay, I see. So if you see that question mark, there's, like, the room on top of it, the room to the right, and the room below it. Usually, secret rooms uh, appear... I'm not sure what tarot card maybe you'll buy here. Um, yeah. yeah, the secret rooms appear adjacent to three rooms. Sometimes two rooms. And there's a second kind of secret room that only appears adjacent to one room, almost always. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So I, I the magician. I don't. I, I a lot of these times I'm just trying this stuff out to see what it does. Like I have no yeah, idea. So that's the thing with with Isaac. There's all these items, like 200 items now that you need to learn what they do. Uh, the magician is. It gives you homing tears, 
But tarot cards usually only have like brief effects or like one room effects. They wear off as soon as you leave, or they okay. wear off in like five seconds. So that gave you homing tears for one room, but because there were no enemies, you didn't really get a chance to see it. But if you did, they would like heat seek into your enemies. Ah, oh, decent. It's okay. It's not a great tarot card. There's an item you can find called the Bent Spoon that will give you like permanent homing tears. A lot of the items are self-explanatory, like after you pick them up, but uh, you know a lot of them are incomprehensible as well. Okay, so you've run into a mini boss here. This is one of the seven deadly sins. So there's like sloth, which you're fighting right now, greed, lust, envy, wrath, like all of the seven right. deadly sins have a boss associated with them. Yeah. And they can be pains in the asses, but sometimes it's it's good to fight them because they can actually give you uh, certain items. I don't know what item sloth gives you. Uh, he might just give you a tarot card. He might give you like anarchist cookbook. Yeah, give yep, you a tarot there we card. Go. Okay. And yeah. it is going to be High Priestess. It's a good card. We'll see how you use it here. Right oh. now. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that? Uh, <laughs> that not I, the greatest like, use of that, it, but... That mom or whatever? Her... Yeah, her, her leg comes down, and if there's an enemy, it'll do damage to it. Uh, like, a lot of damage to it. It probably would have killed the boss instantly. So wait, that's linked to the actual card? That wasn't just... Yes. Him? Okay. Yeah, the High Priestess card is the, the leg that comes down. So occasionally you'll come across these uh, different colored enemies too. These all have kind of unique... Oh, Golden Key, that's awesome actually. Uh, these all have unique, I guess, modifiers. Like, some of them will attack faster, some of them will have more health. Okay. But also the, the colored ones will always drop some kind of item. They might drop a, a penny, they might drop a key or a bomb, but they'll always drop something. As opposed to most enemies who, who don't drop anything. Right, right. Okay, that's, that's cool to look out for then. Yeah, absolutely. And the golden key you got, in case you're not familiar, uh, on, it gives you like unlimited keys for the floor. It basically unlocks every possible lock ah, on, on the, the floor. Ah, the master key. Yeah, but you d you don't get any extra keys. Does that make sense? Like once you go down to the next floor, the effect wears off. Okay. Okay. Luckily, you picked up some extra health there, so you should be able to survive a little bit longer. I, I, you what, can what only your... enter those rooms when you have full health. Oh, because uh, I think I in a second I'm gonna go out there again and try to like bomb the shit out of it. <laughs> Which I really I really want to get in there, but I didn't uh, exactly know. Yeah, and, I mean, okay. Not a great use of a bomb, and uh, no. do you know what? I guess you know now what the anarchist cookbook does. Um. Yes. If you can remember, <laughs> yeah. Uh, anarchist cookbook is probably one of my least favorite items in the game. Uh, there are times when it has a use, but I would definitely probably would have stuck with uh, with Guppy's head. But it actually might kill this boss, like, instantly. Uh, Take everything I say with a grain of salt as well, because, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, my opinion differs from popular opinion. and Everyone has their own play style as well. Yeah, it's true. I'm sure uh, as time goes on and I get get more familiar with the game and stuff, I'll be like, uh, I'm pretty sure you're wrong. And, you know, I, I definitely <laughs> won't uh, hesitate to. Yeah, of course. I know you won't. All right, so... That was a little scary, but... Yeah, hey man, <laughs> you, come on, I like to live on the edge. <laughs> yeah, you managed to pick up some some extra hearts. I mean, the, I, you're playing fine so far from like a mechanical standpoint. It's all about right now just like learning the strategy. So you want to conserve keys and bombs and only use them in certain situations. Uh, like, yeah, if you had... I guess you didn't have any keys to save, but if you'd saved your bombs, maybe you could come across like a, a tinted rock, which is a rock that is blue. And if you blow that up with one of your bombs, sometimes that'll give you a key or extra blue hearts that you can use. Uh, to make yourself a little bit more, you know, hearty. Right, right. Uh, but yeah, but yeah I, I would say you're definitely, I don't know, what are we at now, like, 13 minutes? I'm pretty sure my first run in The Binding of Isaac was only, like, 10 minutes, so you've already got me beat on that front. Can't even remember how I died, but it was not good. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know, I think, uh, item-wise, I guess the stuff is, is pretty decent that I've got. I don't know, it's, it's hard for me to say, but I'm sure there's a, well, with over 200 items and stuff, it makes for pretty... Pretty randomized plays. It's one of those things we're probably never going to see something like this ever again. You know? Yeah, exactly. That's the the beauty of the game is like the variety of different runs you can have. I mean, there's a lot of items have like similar functions that overlap. Like, there's a lot of items that give you flying, and there's a lot of items that give you like a tears upgrade or a health upgrade and stuff like that. But yeah, there, there's a lot of uh, you know variety in terms of the runs that you are going to get. So so that room I was in before with the three bombs in there is that something yes. where. I would need flying to get those, or...? Yeah, you have two options, or it's three options. You could have flying, uh, which would allow you to get those easily. You could have the ladder, which you saw in a shop earlier, and that allows you to walk over, like, one space of blocks. Oh, okay, okay. And the ladder is, like, permanent use. All, like, all the items in, in Isaac are permanent use, in a sense. Like, there's never an item, like in Spelunky, where if you use it once, it's gone. Like, the parachute or something. Um... Okay, so you got Poison Touch here, which is a solid item. I hate those neutral flies. Yeah, that's going to be a pain in the ass. 
Uh, yeah, those are probably some of my least favorite enemies. Those were just added in Wrath of the Lamb. But you gotta have Spirit Heart anyway, or a whole Spirit Heart out of that poop, I guess. So yeah, what is the difference between Spirit Hearts and normal hearts? Well, uh, like Spirit Hearts, if you have both Red Hearts and Spirit Hearts, the Spirit Hearts will be taken first when you take damage, That's and you can't replenish them. Like when you lose Red Hearts, it leaves you with those heart containers, and then when you find Red Hearts on the ground, it re will replenish those empty heart containers. But with Spirit Hearts, uh, you have to find like whole new Spirit Hearts on the ground. So uh... it's not a huge difference, but it actually does play a pretty significant role in, in a lot of your runs. Like, for a long time, the only time I could win at the Binding of Isaac is when I got an item that oh man, that was... <laughs> yeah, that was bad, I know, I know. No, it's okay, you just learn, uh, like, ways to dodge these guys. Yeah. So, yeah, o over time, you'll, like, I used to just find items that gave you spirit hearts, I still do this to an extent, and then I would just, like, abuse those, and you can get hearts, like, off the screen, like, 20 or 30 hearts, and then basically, no matter how much damage you take, you're gonna be fine. Uh, so what you picked up there, the red patch, I'm honestly not sure what the red patch does, but I think it's similar to Rage in like, the more damage you take, the more damage you do or something like that. No man, it just helps uh, you quit smoking, that's... <laughs> I'm getting a little scared here, but... No, I got this under control. <laughs> nah, uh, really. But that is a trinket, so the, all the trinkets in the game have uh, passive effects. So I'm not sure what the red patch does, I think it works similar to that bloody lust that you picked up earlier. But I am starting to think that we are probably in for a death soon. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's uh, every good <laughs> You can thing see the writing on the wall, right? Pardon? You can just see the writing on the wall a lot yeah. of the times in Isaac. Uh, there's not a whole lot you can do about it right now, <laughs> except uh, you could. Oh, you don't have a bomb. I was going to say, whoa, what I meant to tell you. Oh, this is probably going to do it, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Greed ended so many of my early runs. He's a pain in the ass. You know, the problem is... Um, I kind of... Oh, is this gonna... Oh, I got scared because uh, the bombs can like interact with each other and like knock other bombs closer to you. They, uh, what was I gonna say? So, a lot of time I don't even see like his red spitballs or whatever. Like, like it kind of just like we're blending in with mine. So that's yeah, yeah. part of the reasons why, why ah, I died in this particular situation. Because I was just like, everything for me was color coded. At this point red was <laughs> like good and white was bad, but... Understood. Uh, but uh, I think you played really well there, actually, for for a first game. Don't listen to the commentators or the commenters. Listen to the commentators. That's us. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Work on your strategy. Conserve your bombs and keys a little bit more, and you will be fine. So that's gonna do it for Isaac 101. Be sure to check out Mike's channel, YouTube.com/slash Michael Fox. I'll leave a link in the video description, and I will see you guys next time with another lesson. All right. Bye.